Rider syndrome is associated with a sexually transmitted disease with chlamydia and occasionally with enterocolic infections, such as dysentery. The infection ceases and the syndrome begins as an autoimmune disease. The hallmarks are urethritis, conjunctivitis, and arthritis. There's also significant heel pain in 70% from Achilles tendinosis, and there's also SI pain associated. 40% of patients will develop conjunctivitis, as noted in this eye exam seen on the right. Myalgias are common. Sausage digits or large swollen fingers are very rare. And circinate ballantinus is a painless sore on the gland's penis, which is quite common with writers. Psoriatic arthritis uh, is a typical disease. It's estimated that 3% of the population has psoriasis. Uh, and it's a skin disease normally seen with silvery erythematous patches over extensor surfaces. Patients with nail bed changes, as seen on the right, have a higher correlation with the arthritic component of psoriasis. 23% of patients with nail bed changes will develop arthritis, and 5% will have spondyloarthropathies. Enteropathic arthritis, as Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, and possibly even irritable bowel, 10 to 20% will develop sacroiliitis, and 10% will develop spondylitis. Here we see a CT scan of a normal right SI joint and a fused left SI joint. Rheumatoid arthritis is noted for the destruction of synovial joints throughout the body. You develop the enthesopathy, as we note on the right picture, of an inflamed joint with worn cartilage versus a normal joint. The rheumatoid arthritis problem is typically symmetrical. There's painful subcutaneous nodules, and spinal involvement is almost always exclusively cervical. Very uncommon to have the lumbar spine involved. Patients with rheumatoid arthritis can develop mononeuritis multiplex and even vasculitis. Rheumatoid arthritis, of course, is an immune system which destroys the synovium of the joints. The hands are the most commonly infected, and in fact, the picture that we see here shows the typical periarticular absorption and the windswept deformity of the fingers. Spinal involvement is also noted, and there can be a dislocation or translocation of C1 on 2, causing significant spinal cord compression. Neuropathic pain is from a damage from the nerve itself. The pain signals relentlessly and becomes amplified by facilitation in memory. Neuropathic pain tends to be of a burning quality. Most patients will talk about crushing, gnawing, and crawling type pain. Neuropathic pain typically is worse at night and generally not affected by activity, but that's not always the case. Patients will develop allodynia or pain generated from innocuous stimulation. A simple brush of a feather against the skin can be painful. Patients with neuropathic pain commonly develop reactive depression. Polyneuropathy is an involvement of the fiber length dependent diseased nerves, typically found in both feet. The times that it starts will be more in the evening, it will be a burning sensation, and it can ascend up the legs to the knees. By the time numbness gets to the knees, the hands become involved because the hands are at about the same length of nerve as the length of nerve going down to the knees. Acquired peripheral neuropathies. Patients with acquired peripheral neuropathies have many disease processes which could be associated. Diabetes, alcoholism, autoimmune diseases, infectious diseases, and even inherited diseases, as we talked about Charcot-Marie Tooth. Normally, the diseases attack the myelin sheaths but can destroy the nerves themselves. Sensory nerves are the most commonly involved, but peripheral neuropathies can affect motor nerves. It starts distally in the longest nerves, which of course go to the feet, and ascends slowly. As noted before, burning numbness is the first symptoms. 
Again, as noted before, symptoms are intensified at night, and there is allodynia associated. A lot of patients with this problem can't tolerate bed sheets on their feet. With advanced peripheral neuropathies, there's a loss of proprioception and gait disturbance. It's diagnosed with EMG and MCV and can be treated with the use of physical therapy and medications such as membrane stabilizers. There are metabolic peripheral neuropathies such as hypothyroidism, which causes carpal tunnel syndrome and hung up reflexes. When the reflex is typically tested, such as a biceps, the muscle will contract but release very slowly. B12 deficiencies cause a disease process called subacute combined deficiency of the cord, and there's degeneration of the posterior and lateral columns. Initial symptoms are numbness of the limbs and trunk, which is an early sign, and unsteadiness and gait imbalance as a later sign. The complex regional pain syndrome, CRPS, used to be called reflex sympathetic dystrophy. It's an involvement of the autonomic nervous system, and there is probably a deep sensory component to the sympathetic system, which causes pain and sympathetic postganglionic system afferent pathways. RSD onset is very commonly after a simple injury or surgery. There's severe burning pain and eventually tropic changes of the skin, such as loss of skin texture and swelling. There's two essential stages. The initial stage where there's increased circulation, swelling, and color change, and then later, three to six months, swelling disappears, but the extremity is cool and pale with contracted joints, brittle nails, and continuing pain. Pictures of early RSD here noted and late RSD. Myopathies are not uncommon. It's a primary, primarily a disorder of skeletal muscle. There's associated weakness, cramping, and myoglobinuria. Generally, there is proximal weakness. Difficulty from rising from a chair is noted. Patients can't climb stairs because of quad and buttocks weakness, and they can't work there with their arms overhead. It's typically symmetric, and there is no sensory loss. This is purely a muscle disorder. Polymyositis is muscle pain and tenderness. Next flexors and proximal limb weakness, there's noted to be typically a high ESR and creatinine kinase, and this is treated with steroids. Finally, fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a syndrome. It's a constellation of symptoms found in a group of individuals, but they cannot be identified by any marker. There's no lab test, there's no EMG finding, there is no type of specific test that can identify this. Patients with chronic pain, and this chronic pain is diffuse, nonspecific, and found throughout the body, are typically patients with fibromyalgia. There must be four uh, areas or four quadrants with discrete tender points to make the diagnosis. Thank you for your attention.